Okay, the math is pretty simple. So this year we've re-rated down about 1.5 multiple points from the beginning of the year. And then on top of that, consider that consensus earnings 2019 over 2018 are about another 10%. So if we just get back to the earnings multiple that we started at the beginning of the year at, and we get the 10% consensus earning growth, we'll be at the exact same multiple when we get that 15% growth in the equity market as we started the year. So, and given the underlying economic ahead. fundamental situation, very strong manufacturing, Goldilocks situation from an inflation standpoint, um, if we don't get the tail risk from a political standpoint, which we can talk about, there's no reason to think we can't actually do much better than that, 15%, or maybe not much better, but meaningfully better over the next 18 months. Tom, I don't know where you stand on where, how much higher the market can go from here, but my sense is that it's likely that corporate profits may be peaking for this cycle. Maybe. I don't know. But if they do and stock prices continue to move up, that's all very nice, well and good, but that means that the valuations will get yeah. stretched. And it's, it's absolutely, yeah, I can't argue with that fact. You know, the... Um, the premise Thank of... Thank God you can't. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> well, yeah. Finally, I get one right. I think you got two right in the last 15 minutes. Good. Yeah. With the, uh, you know, the, the, the conversation about earnings growth, it's a true statement. Uh, positive uh, quarter over quarter, year over year earnings growth, I think it continues probably through this quarter, but I do think probably we're at that uh, peaking point. You know, it's, it's going to be hard to really tell into 2019 whether we're going to get 20 plus percent earnings growth. I kind of doubt it. I think the right number is, I don't know if it's sub 10, but I think it's in the teens. But even that, you know, look back three or four or five years from now, that is positive earnings growth. And it's in an environment where investors that are still in the market are pretty optimistic. Consumers are optimistic. The job market is getting tight. The only thing that's really absent, I think, is that fear of what's happening on the political side and the, the trade side. You know, what is that going to do to the markets? I find that missing right now. And uh, it may be just because we're overly optimistic and maybe the data is giving us a good reason for it. So, Tony, you, you point out that you are concerned about the midterm elections. And, and, and to pick up on the political point that Tom just made, I don't know whether trade figures mm -hmm. into whatever worries you have, but certainly the possibility that the president may not be able to push through uh, more of his and the GOP agenda has you concerned. Yeah, that's right, Tyler. So let's take a step back for a moment and think about what's happened in the last two years. We've had an unprecedented historic amount a fiscal stimulus in a non-recessionary environment in terms of both tax reform and in terms of budget deficits. And then on top of that, we've had significant regulatory relief um, on the part of the federal government. And so when you put all that together and consider this midterm election, this midterm election is probably the most significant midterm we've had um, in the, in the post-war era. And specifically, the Senate is really the litmus test on whether or not the populace in America is going to continue to support the, the policies of this administration. It's really a referendum, frankly, um, on the economic-led approach to governing that this president has taken. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very much a binary situation. If the Republicans are able to hang on to the Senate, they've got a very narrow majority right now, but there's never been a post-election period where the incumbent party had to defend less seats than the Republicans have to defend now. And our base case is for the Republicans to hold on to the Senate. Mm -hmm. Then I think you get a rally in the market that is a 2.0 rally if you think back to when Trump was elected originally. And that's pretty powerful. And I agree with Tom that we could easily get low double digits on earnings. I think that we've passed the, the peak earnings growth period because by necessity we had that big tax impact, which was a one-time impact. Um, but if we continue to have low double digit earning growth um, and right. we continue to see the economy we're right. in with low inflation, we look pretty good. 